how would you describe your sound the, for the used? Like, how do you, I know you always said we're just a, we're a rock band, yeah, but of we're, course. You, we're an emo band. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me give you a round of applause, because that's a lot. This is, yeah. don't, you think you, don't you think you fought that for so long? I did, I did. And it's, it's kind of partly because what, what kind of music isn't emotional, right. really. But it became a signature sound, and mm -hmm. we came full circle. We love being an emo band. You should be proud of it. We've been an emo band for 25 years. I'm Allison Hagendorf. Yeah, this is Allison Hagendorf. Hello, my fellow music lovers, and welcome to the Allison Hagendorf Show. Hello everyone and welcome to the Allison Hagendorf Show. This is where we celebrate the universal love of music, the stories behind the songs, and the humans behind the artists. I'm so glad you're here. We are coming to you from DWP Studios in Los Angeles, and I want to give a shout out to our presenting sponsor, Cloudwater, which I love, and they help make this show possible along with you. Your support means the world to me. Thank you for watching, listening, and subscribing. Today's guest is Burt McCracken, frontman of the band The Used. I cannot emphasize enough the role that this band has played in my life. Their 2002 self-titled debut album is a perfect album start to finish and was one of the most defining albums of the early 2000s emo, screamo, and post-hardcore scenes. It is one of my personal favorites. After 10 studio albums, Burt is making his solo debut under the moniker and album title, Robbie the Used. We talk all about the new album and its pop-leaning direction, his tumultuous journey, sobriety, lessons learned, optimism, hope, and fatherhood. We'll be right back with Burt McCracken here in the studio. With the holiday season upon us, I have a great gift idea for either yourself or that special guy in your life. Give the gift of confidence with the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra by Manscaped. This is a grooming upgrade and is the all-in-one set that has everything you need to look and feel your best. It includes the Weed Whacker 2.0 to tame those rogue hairs and the Lawn Mower 5.0 Ultra to keep everything else in check. It's waterproof and reduces nicks and the risk of ingrown hairs. Join the 11 million men worldwide who trust in Manscaped and get 20% off plus free shipping with the code Allison20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code Allison20 at manscaped.com. Stay on top of your grooming game and be ready for anything the season throws your way. It's a win for everyone. My guest today is the front man for one of my favorite bands, The Used. In addition to being one of the landmark bands who defined the sound of the early 2000s, they have continued to thrive for the last 22 years, putting out 10 studio albums. Now our guest is making his solo debut with Robbie The Used, Burt McCracken. Hello. Welcome to the show. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. Happy to be here. We were just saying that the last time I saw you was at the used Troubadour show. Yes. And I went with Feldy. Cool. And I was mental at that show. Yeah. I mean, I was like hanging over the balcony, <laughs> like just fucking going nuts. You know, That's like awesome. I, there are certain bands that I go to see where I allow myself to surrender. Right. And I just let it go. I and love that. when Feldy came on the show, on, on this show, he said that watching me was like the template for how you see a rock show. Yeah. <laughs> I've never been more flattered in my <laughs> That's entire beautiful. life. That's so good. We can only hope that people just let let go at the used show. Yes. Feel, feel free. That was a special night at the Troubadour, wasn't it? It was. It really was. It's always good there. It felt I so good. Club. Um, but I want to talk about Robbie the Used. All right. I love this album. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Talk so to me. So proud of it. You know, like, talk to me first about the moniker. Yeah. Like, how did you come up with that? And why was it the right name for the album as well? I've just always had that nickname. Mm -hmm. my, my, my family calls me Robbie or Rob. Uh huh. I got stuck with Bert. I was in a ska punk band, and there's another guy named Rob, Robbie. So he started calling me Bert. Okay, so that's um, where it started. Yeah, and I've never really been that into it. It okay. just became me. And uh, I love that I never knew this until this moment. That yeah. You're like, that just became my name. Yeah. yeah, so he's a different guy. He's a very different guy yeah. than, than Robbie. Like, so do you go by, like, what does your wife call you? She calls me Robbie. Oh, she does, yeah. okay. Or Rob. And my family calls me Robert. Okay. Yeah. So would you say, is Bert, like, 
the used front man? Yes. Yes. Okay. 100%. Bert's okay. the unhinged, kind of loose, vicious. Sometimes, wild child. Sometimes wild as fuck, yeah. Yes. Yep. But we love Bert. Uh, and we love Robbie, too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about this album. You can feel that you poured your heart and soul into it. Tell me why, like, now is the right time for this. I'm always trying to fight to get pop songs on the used record. Okay. I came up in pop, Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, Mariah Carey. Greats, the greats. Love, yeah. The Same stuff that, here. Stuff that my parents would allow me to listen to. Right. Um, and yeah, so it's, it's a constant battle to get a pop song on the used record. And sometimes I feel bad. They want to keep it heavy, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. So I decided to just make a bunch of pop songs that I love. Yeah, and you just hit a milestone birthday. So it's just sort of like, this is a celebration. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. I love that. Anything with a good catchy melody mm -hmm. that you can sing along to is my wheelhouse. I really love this album. I just was like, it's not, I don't have like a favorite song. I feel like I know the whole album yeah. really, really well. Awesome. Um, there is a block of songs on the album that I love and I'd like to just share with you. Wake Up Call. Yeah. So Wake Up Call is one of my favorite songs. Right on. But then it goes into In My Dreams and Blame You, and then it goes into Push Me, which yeah. is such a beautiful ballad. Thank um, you. I love how in my dreams you have like kind of like that spoken word right. part. Yeah. It's like, I feel like there's so many different sides of you on this album oh, that thanks. I didn't even know existed. Is that how it feels like for you? 100%. Yeah. yeah. I was able to just be free with John Feldman. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like we go into the studio. We have a little therapy session, sometimes cry and sometimes laugh. We figure out where we're at in that moment, in that day, and then we write it down. We put, wow. it, put it to song. And I love that you guys have such a history together that you Me truly too. can be yourselves in a safe space yeah. in that beautiful studio of his. He's an amazing older brother. Oh. He's an amazing person to have in my life, yeah. So I bet it made it, he was almost like a catalyst in this dynamic to allow yourself to, to, to try things that you haven't tried before. Yeah, he really, um, it was like a kind of a pet project for him. Mm -hmm. he, he just uh, was so into making pop music with me. We'd come in, let, let's try to make a, a Backstreet Boys sounding song or let's try to make a Lil Nas X sounding song. Right. And uh, yeah, he's so talented. Mm -hmm. He can write three songs a day. Yeah, he uh, he's so prolific. You're right. So prolific. And I also want to say that your voice sounds amazing. Oh, thank your voice you. sounds so good on this album. Thank you. What do you do like for your voice? Like, do you do you do exercises? Like, how I do you keep it so conditioned? I sing a lot. Okay. Like on the tour, I would I would do about a half hour warm up before sound check, and then sound checks maybe a half hour, and then I'd run the Robbie the Use stuff, which is like a half hour to an hour. And then we play a full set before we go out and play a set. So sometimes I'm singing five hours a day. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you are conditioned. I mean, it's it's a muscle, and it sounds that way. Like it oh, just sounds so pristine. Thank you. Um, I love that you had um, Sierra on the on the album. For, She's such a beautiful singer. Wow. Yeah. The two of you complement each other so much. Yeah. She did. She came in and did one take. Oh, okay. And it was just like okay. everyone's like, oh my god. She's amazing. She's amazing. She's Luke Hemming's wife, who we also had on the show. I yeah. love their love, and they're 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 such a, a special couple too. It's amazing. Yeah. When you, what did you learn about yourself making this album? Um, I learned that I'm not afraid to kind of tap into the more joyous, happy side of myself. Really try to uh, love myself. Yes. Um, and I'm not afraid to open up. I never have been. Mm -hmm. So whatever's deep down, I like to share it. I think people can really relate when you kind of tear your heart open and put it into song. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, there was, there was a quote that you had written. I want to see if I can find it here. But it was just really about, um, here it is. You said, you want the music to show that there's room for love, that yeah. there's room for growth, there's room for redemption. There's so many good people and so many good things happening. I love hearing that because... Yeah. A lot of darkness happening and around a us. A lot of darkness, And right? it's very powerful to hear that type of hope and optimism. Yeah, I think people are good. Yeah. I think there's a lot of good in this world and a lot of joy and a lot of happiness that we can kind of 
maybe feel distracted from mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I subscribe to this because what's the alternative? Right. You know, what are you going to do? Right. Despair. Hate. And hate. And you know what? I think that it's all about energy, right? Right. So if we are feeling a moment of hope or a moment of happiness or being grateful and we can actually genuinely feel that and share that, then that person, if we can change their perspective, yeah. you know, and it's just this sort of domino effect yeah. in a positive way. It's a lot about pretending as well. Mm -hmm. If I'm smiling and I don't feel like smiling, then eventually I feel like smiling. Right. Right. It's manifesting it. Yeah. yeah. Totally. I love that because for me, we can all feel very overwhelmed because we can't control. Yeah. A lot of most most things. And most people want to control. To control, and I, I have to say, I'm good about letting go of things that I can't control. Yeah, I, me I, too. I am back, and I think that's a, a skill that if it's not something that's innate for you, that's something you can work on. Yeah. Right. Yep. So I am like, okay, I can't control that, but I can control my reaction to it. And for me, it always comes down to being grateful. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Gives you a step back to be like, okay. This is good. That's a great way to So let's to just play focus it. on what is good instead yeah, of what, just, what isn't good. Just the fact that I was allowed to make these songs and mm -hmm. John Feldman was so supportive. And um, yeah, it's a, a crazy thing mm -hmm. to feel that kind of love and, and support in the studio. Ugh, it's such a special. What, do you, what is it about the two of you? Like, what is it about your chemistry? I'm not sure. He's, he's such a different character. Mm -hmm. He really is. He's, uh, he's his own person. He there's, is. There's no one on the planet like him. I couldn't um, agree more. He does this too. He says, I love my life. Yeah. He says that every day. He, puts, he actually says it aloud. Yeah. Yes. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, he's um, a beautiful big brother. Aww. You know, known him for 25 years. He's the reason why we started. He yes. set everything up for us, flew us out to LA, recorded the demo for us, mm -hmm. and found us management, took us on our first tour. Like we owe him everything. That's unbelievable. I know he was really the one where, because you, ha I remember you had maybe memories. I think that was the, was that the first song that yeah, you. Yeah, maybe memories, taste of ink, and Voxful was, yes. was the demos <sighs> he just picked up on. So, and taste of ink was of course the song that I feel like really catapulted the band into another stratosphere. And I think to this day, I think it has like the most streams of, of all the used catalog. Yeah, for sure. I play it during the Robbie the Use set. You do? Yeah. Oh, wait, first tell me what it's like playing the, the new song, Robbie the Use. Talk to me about that, like playing out live, what it's like. It's wild. It's like back to the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, small crowd and it's really intimate and it's really special. It feels like a big party, really. Oh, it's wonderful. People um, still allowed to feel free at the Robbie the Use shows. I see a lot of, like, just freedom. Just yeah. the space for enthusiasm, mm -hmm. which is tough to allow yourself to go there. Right, yes. A lot of dancing, uh, surprisingly a lot of singing along to the whole record. That's so awesome. Yeah. Well, I have to say all the songs are very instant. They are. They're right. very catchy. They're oh, like, thanks. I mean, I know it really, really well. Oh, thank it's you. It's so, so good. Thanks. I mean, can we just talk about Wake Up Call for a second? Because I just love that song. Yeah. I also just love the lyrics. Right on. I do. I yeah, think that's something we can all relate to. Yeah, it's definitely not really about drinking but that that barrier that you kind of put in front of yourself mm -hmm. and can block you from really important things and um, sometimes you miss out yeah when you don't kind of commit to happiness mm -hmm. that's exactly right yeah yeah I think that's important to sort of be open to receiving yeah you know and a lot of times we're just not open yeah and people could be giving us the signals can yeah. people can be trying to tell us but we, we just we can't yeah see when you have when you have um all the chances in the world and you decide not to take them yeah it's a tragic thing mm -hmm. but yeah i'm also literal like 15 right. years ago i would just miss everything because i was drunk mm -hmm. yeah Going back to the Taste of Ink time in the beginning of this, I can't imagine what that was like because you guys really catapulted into into a world stage right. pretty quickly. Yeah. And then mix in drugs, yeah. alcohol, mix in youth. Yeah. Were you like 19? Yeah, when this 18, was 18, 18, 19, 19 when yeah. this was all happening? Yeah. That's a lot to process. Exactly. So what was like, how what was happening for you? I was just excited to be doing what I was doing. Mm -hmm. Ever since I was little, I saw Michael Jackson perform on MTV, and I'm like, that's exactly what I'm going to do when I grow up. 
Was it really Michael Jackson? Yep. That's amazing. Yeah. People are always like, you got to have a backup plan. I was like, never did. And you never did. Never it was had your a backup calling. Plan. Yeah. It was your calling. And uh, playing Warp Tour on the little stage just felt so incredible and energetic. And we'd break the stuff all the time. And we were kind of a band's band at first. Mm -hmm. A lot of the bands from Warp Tour would come watch us from the side of the stage, which just felt awesome. And yeah, it was wild back then. I would just go crazy until I puked. It's like Yeah, the puking. Can we talk yeah. about the puking? Because yeah. I do remember, that was sort of like a signature move. Yeah. I remember it personally seeing you at Unfortunately. like Irving Plaza, like in 2003, which was such a sick show. It was yeah. like one of, I was like, it may have been the first time I ever saw you. Right. And I was like, okay, this is my favorite band. Yeah. It's like when you try to run a mile. Yeah. As fast as you can. Right. You're going to puke. It's the physicality of it. Yeah. It's just because you gave it your everything. Everything. Yeah, it was never a gimmick. Yeah. It's always something that I was kind of embarrassed about, but became a gimmick and mm -hmm. became like this kind of puke on me, Bert, kind of thing. <laughs> puke on me, Bert. Yes, yes. It was an unintentional yeah. signature. Yeah. Um, but it was an indication of how much you were committed to it, how much yeah. you were pouring into your craft. Yeah, I didn't, I, I didn't feel like it was about the quality of the song, but the quality of the energy on mm -hmm. the stage and how hard you go off. Yeah. Yeah. I have to tell you that we're around the same age, but you know, I grew up loving the 90s grunge and alternative rock. Me too. Like that was the music that first imprinted on me. Yeah. So I also grew up loving Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson, all right. of that. But it was that alternative rock scene that changed me for me life too. that I was like, it kind of started my identity. Me too. But it wasn't my generation because I was too young. I never got to see any of those bands right, at that either. time. Like yeah. I never got to see Nirvana. Yeah, me neither. And that was my favorite band. Yeah. But then the used became our generation's yeah. music. And right. that's how I felt. So like my love of bands like Nirvana and Soundgarden and Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, this was almost like the next iteration for me. Oh, and that's great. and I just want to hold this up for a visual because I want everyone to know what this CD meant for me. I mean, there was a period of my life where I only listened to this start to finish over and over and over oh, again. Oh, that's amazing. Like, it's so sick. It's yeah. so impressionable, and it really defined an era of music. It's been my favorite music since we started making it. I remember showing friends and just playing it in my headphones over and over and over and over, thinking, wow, I can't believe how good this sounds. That's amazing. Yeah. So at the time, you you did realize that it was special. Definitely. Nothing had ever sounded like that before. It really yeah. was unique. We had a of... demo. We played at this bowling alley. They allowed us to play it. And everybody was just like, wow, never heard anything like this. So immediately it was like, yeah, I think we're on to something. Oh, that's amazing. And your voice in particular from the start has always been so special. And I went back and watched the Taste of Ink video. Yeah. Which was so great. You just you're, The whole band just had such great presence. Um, and then the, the interesting trivia is that that Lana yep. was in the video. Yep. Lana Clarkson. Yeah. That's and, wild. And and she was murdered. Yeah. Just two months after after the video. Yeah. Just such a crazy the thing. The Phil Spector story. Yep. And it's just like that's that's wild. Wild. Yeah. So when you heard the news about her passing, like what was what was that like? We couldn't believe it. Yeah. Absolutely insane. Yeah. And I love that she's wearing a, a BYU uh, yeah. shirt, a little uh, Brigham Young nod right there. A lot there. of a lot of uh, homage to mm. homage to our yes to our growing up and to our childhood. That must have been challenging, kind of growing up in that a Mormon household. Yeah, and... my mom threw away "Incesticide" by Nirvana like oh. four different times, but it's the record that taught me how to sing harmonies and learned so much from Nirvana. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. I picked up a guitar and started learning Nirvana songs mm -hmm. and yeah. I love that we have like Michael Jackson, Janet Jackson and Nirvana, and Nirvana. in common. Yeah, That's Pearl so Jam 10 was my oh, first CD. The best. Yeah. Uh, we had the same references. Yeah, I Rage Against it. the Machine changed my life. I was like, what's Gaza? What's mm -hmm. that all about? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a, I, I feel grateful that we got to, you know, come up with 100%. that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Another funny thing about that time was when, so then you started dating Kelly Osborne and then you're on the Osbournes, and yeah. all, all of a sudden you were like in everyone's family room and yeah. being on television. Yeah. That's led to another layer to just the whirlwind. Now you were on this like global stage, you know? Yeah. What was that like? 
Just adding that kind it of was some strange. Pressure. It was strange. I think the band really hated it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was it was good for the band. She's so sweet. Yeah. We had a really cool relationship. Met her on Ozfest, and like we imme immediately hit it off and did a lot of drugs together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do, have you guys kept in touch at all these years? I see her every once in a while. Yeah. And it's really nice to see her. That's I think, wonderful. I think Sharon still hates my guts. But. <laughs> <laughs> I'll actually be with them tonight. I'll find out. All right. That's really funny. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. You both have families now. And, 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 you know, you had been through so much. You had been through so much darkness and, and pain um, and, and challenges, you know? Yeah. How, did you, how did you turn it around and, and find your light? I just put it into song, really, mm -hmm. yeah. When I lost my first girlfriend during In Love and Death, mm -hmm. it was unbelievable for me to have my very first experience with death like mm -hmm. that. And uh, John Feldman actually was the one who kind of picked me up and took me to the studio, came, picked me up from the apartment, took me straight to the studio, and he's like, we need to write this down. And we wrote Hard to Say. It was wow. a really cool moment, just days after she passed. So. Oh my God. Yeah, and I lost my little chihuahua during that record, and it was just devastating. We wrote all that I've got about the little puppy. Oh. Yeah. God. And that album also, I'm just going to hold it up because I've back <laughs> my CDs because it just feels good. It has the original like, sticker on it. You know, oh, it's just, awesome. I love tangible, you Me know. Too. I still love all of my CDs and records, and yeah. I like to look at the liner notes and, and touch it. You and know? Alex Party kind of changed our life with In Love and Death, with the heart noose and everything. Mm -hmm. Immediately, we're like, that's that's an iconic. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It's gorgeous. It's really cool. You guys have always been um, really artful in your yeah. expression, not just in your music, but in your merch and your and your imagery. And every single record throughout this whole process. Like, if I think about bands, I do think of the used as having one of the best like imagery. Right. Yeah. That's something that's really important to you guys. Yeah, we've been lucky to work with people that are insanely talented. And I think that what's cool about The Used is that when we work with people, we never try to control what happens. We kind of let the person be the person, mm -hmm. whether it's our sound guy or production manager or the artists that work on the record. It's like, please listen to the record and create what you feel it's about. That's so great. Yeah. It's giving them the freedom to exactly. do their own creative perspective. Yeah. How did you meet your wife, Allison? Because I feel like you guys coming together was such a pivotal point in your entire trajectory. Yeah. You know, how did you guys connect? It was really cool. It's a really cool story. She worked for Warner Brothers at the time. We went to Australia in 2004, 2005, something like that. And uh, they had this meet the label extravaganza on this boat, this yacht. Oh my God. That's walked amazing. onto the boat and I saw her from across the room and I said, that's the girl I'm gonna marry. You're kidding me. And just followed her around the whole night and... Uh, Did she feel the same way? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so it was love at first sight she, for you. She kind of hides the fact that she was, maybe she wasn't a used fan, maybe she was. It's, uh, it's so sweet. But then yeah, I stayed with her in Australia for like three weeks. And then I called her boss at Warner. I'm like, she quits. She's moving to LA with me. And yeah, the rest is history. That's we, amazing. Yeah, we lived here for eight years or so. And then when we decided to have kids, we're like, let's go to Sydney. Yeah, yeah. Sydney is one of the greatest cities. We were talking about that before. I love it. And how has becoming a father changed you? I think it allows true love in your life, it allows unconditional love. And that feels good when this side of my life, Burt McCracken, is maybe not the most in love with himself, mm -hmm. you know, has a lot of um, things from the past that kind of eats me alive at times. Mm -hmm. But when I'm at home with the kids and I'm just a dad, then it's it's all love. It's all, it's true love. It is. Yeah. It's the most selfless love. Exactly. And no matter how you're doing or how you're feeling, the kids just look at you and you know mm -hmm. everything's okay. That's beautiful. Yeah. Becoming a mother has changed me similarly where things I thought were important selfishly for my ego. Right. I thought this was so, oh, I do, th this is me, I do this. All of that I, I let go. Yeah. It's just not, it's not important. It it's not what defines place. me. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely grounded me. I'm just a human being mm -hmm. who's a dad. Aw. Yeah. 
That's beautiful. Yeah. What, what do you hope that they learn from you? That, you? that you can do whatever you want in life. Nobody can tell you that you can't. If you want to be an actor mm -hmm. or a figure skater, mm -hmm. whatever you want to be, you absolutely can be. It's so, it's so inspiring and it's so true. It is true. Yeah, it is true. I know yeah. it's an exciting time. Can't let anyone ever tell you that you can't. That's right. Because you can. You've, you've been very vocal about mental health in the past, and you even said that during the pandemic was a really trying time for yeah. you, and it was for most of us. Yeah. What was it about that time that was extra challenging, and how did you, how did you cope with it and get through it? I was kind of religiously into going to the gym at the time. Mm -hmm. And when the gym closed, it kind of caved in my world. Also yeah. not being able to play shows, which yes. is like my lifeline. Right. Um, but yeah, I got seriously sick. I had to get serious help. Mm -hmm. It's still residual to this day. Really? Oh, yeah. Ugh. It's tough, but we live it. It is tough. We live it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's really, that's really difficult when the gym or music is it's medicine it's medicinal it's exactly. therapy exactly um it's it's what you equate with also like being yourself and your life so yeah. when that gets taken away that's really really difficult. australia was very locked down mm -hmm. as well it was like don't leave your house for three months kind of thing yeah and in that moment i didn't know if i was ever gonna be able to leave australia again or see my family right. or be able to play shows it's beyond isolating. And every day just watching on the internet, like how long is this thing going to go on? Yeah. It was nice to be at home with the kids for sure, but it took this part of me that maybe I didn't even know existed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there practices that you put in place when you are starting to feel down or depressed that you are able to like to overcome that moment? I can kind of focus on the moment, mm -hmm. focus on what's going on right now mm -hmm. and, and Breathe. Yes. Therapy. Lots of pills. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. You do what you, do what gets you through it. Exactly. Yeah. 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 It's also being honest with yourself yeah, and it's giving tough. yourself grace. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've never wanted to hide anything from anyone. Uh huh. Um, and I think a lot of people have the same struggles with anxiety, of with course. depression, and um, I think there's there's hope, especially hope in music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is. I, there's hope in music. Music yeah. is medicine. It's I mean, it it's is. everything. It's everything. It's very cathartic. It's yes. very therapeutic. It sure is, and it connects us. Yeah, making this Robbie the Use record was just a blessing for me. Is it, we we started working on it in 2020, 2021, and all these songs kind of became the in the moment songs where we go into the studio, we're in a little therapy session, maybe crying. And then, yeah, write it down. It's, it's amazing. It feels that way. It feels very personal. It feels very it is. intimate. Yeah, it's scary putting myself out there like that. Every time I put some, I mean, it's terrifying, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, because you're also not like hiding behind the band or like even in the live show. It's, it's really you singing your song. It's just me on stage. It's wild. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I feel like when I'm up there, there's really nothing to hide from. People are there just to enjoy and experience, mm -hmm. let go and be free in life. Of course. Yeah. I want to do deep cuts with a couple of just quick questions. Cool. Okay. If you weren't a musician, what would you be? Um, I would have to be on stage in some form or another, mm -hmm. musicals or acting or... Comedy. Something. I would have to <laughs> You be love on stage. performing. I love performing. You do. I always have since I was little. Really? Yeah. So you never get nervous taking the stage or anything I like that? I always get nervous. You always get nervous. Yeah. But you like that thrill? I think that's a big part of it. Being nervous shows that I really care about mm -hmm. what I'm about to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you do anything before you take the stage to sort of settle nerves or do you do like a, a pre show mantra or anything like that? I need to be singing. Okay. I need to sing the songs and feel comfortable in the songs and then I know, okay. This is going to be all right on stage if I can do this right now. And we have a little hug before we go on. We look each other in the eye. We tell each other we love each other. Aww. And we got a great team. I kiss my production manager on the mouth. That's every amazing. Day. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to. Yeah, you got and to. And really commit to the love. And it makes, <laughs> it makes my heart calm, you know. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. What is something fans might be surprised to learn about you? The, they, may, they may be surprised to learn that I'm a great dad. Oh, that's <laughs> so sweet. I'm the dad who gets yelled at for not disciplining the kids, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I want them to be free. I want right. them to feel free. 
You're very supportive. Very supportive. Maybe that's not a big surprise, but right. maybe it is. Oh, that's so beautiful. I'm not afraid to mend a bridge that I've burned. And I'm not afraid to be calm and collected and, and friendly, which maybe is not necessarily the vibe with Burt McCracken or hasn't been in the past. Mm -hmm. And I love Celine Dion. Do you? So much. Really? Yeah, she's I mean, she's one of the powerhouse vocalists. Just I mean, one an incredible the, performer. One of the best ever. Yeah. And I love Kelly Clarkson. So do I. Her voice is just so magic. So do I. Yeah. We both love you, and I love Whitney Houston. I love Whitney. I love, and I love Jennifer Hudson. Love Jennifer Hudson. Right? There's so many good voices out there. Yeah. Yeah. Love Beyonce. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, my girls are really lucky. Their mom plays music all the time. That's I right. guess one thing that fans would be surprised about is I don't listen to music. I really? listen to my own music, but that's kind of about it. Really? If there's music on, I enjoy it, but... You don't actively put it on? I don't actively put it on, ever. Is it because you enjoy quiet? I or... don't know why. Maybe that I'm just surrounded by music so yes. often. Maybe that I don't want to ruin those memories that I had with Nirvana and with mm -hmm. Pearl Jam and mm -hmm. Rage. and It's strange. I don't, I don't really know why. It's but interesting. It's, yeah. Wow, that is so interesting to me because I'm always listening to music. I kind of go back to those often, actually. Yeah. It's almost like a safe space. It's like everything's okay. When they're on, I love it. Mm -hmm. I just never, act, I, I'll listen to books, uh -huh. but that's kind of it. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Sometimes I'll do like nature or like zen music because yeah. it's just calming. Some blue noise. Yes. Or pink or white. Right, any of the colors. Yeah. Yes, I love that. If you could meet any celebrity, dead or alive, who would it be? David Bowie, mm -hmm. Prince, Michael Jackson. The greats. Yeah, John Lennon. Would you actually want to meet them? 100%. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Even if they were assholes. Right. I think that that's one of the coolest things, is when somebody's that talented, I think that they have the right to kind of be... <laughs> it's okay. ...to be a prick, yeah. Who, who have you met that you just revered? I met Jeremy Enoch from Sunny Day Real of Estate. I, I met Sunny Jake Day. Bannon from Converge. And were you like a little like starstruck? Or yeah. You, yeah. Sunny Day Real Estate to me it's was like. One of like, my favorites ever. Rising Tide. It's yeah. Like, oh, it's perfection. How it feels to be something on changed my life. I went and saw him right after that record came out. And his voice is just magic. Magic. Yeah. I mean, really, when people talk about emo and all of the, you know, I mean, sun, to me, it's sunny day real estate. Yeah, you know? 100%. Texas is the reason. Yes. Just yes. Brazil. To of course. This is, this is the beginning of it. Yeah, they started it all. They're the, the forefathers. And they never got the credit much for credit. it. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Which they deserve. They do. And in fact, when, everyone, when anyone's talking about emo ever, I'm like, you have homework. Yeah. Yes. I think it was that combination between the true emo bands and the heavy hardcore punk bands like Converge. Yes. That kind of created who I am today. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah because how would you describe your sound the, for the used? Like how do you, I know you always said we're just a, we're a rock band, yeah, but of we're, course. You, we're an emo band. Yeah. 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 I just met the, the actor who plays Homelander in The Boys. Oh yeah? And we were talking about music and I'm like, well, he's like, what kind of music are you? I'm like, we're an emo band. You He's like, what? I'm emo too. Let me give you a round of applause because that's a lot. This is, yeah. don't you think you don't you think you fought that for so long? I did, I did, and it's it's kind of partly because what what kind of music isn't emotional right. really, but it became a signature sound and mm -hmm. we came full circle. We love being an emo band. You should be proud of it. We've been an emo band for 25 years. I love that. Yeah, that's right. And we never broke up. That's true. Yeah. You've been together this entire time, We've prolific. been here the whole fucking time. The entire time. time. Yeah. Yeah. We never took a break. Even when EDM was huge and, <laughs> you know. <laughs> the used was yeah. here. That's we true. Here. You have been here this entire time. Yeah. And I'm grateful for it. Oh, I'm me grateful too. for it. Me too. What is your, your biggest regret? A lot of lost moments when I was deep in my alcoholism. Mm -hmm. I could have, uh, I could have taken moments to clean up that I didn't mm -hmm. and I'm grateful that I did when I did mm -hmm. went to rehab and had really special people around me that helped me but I think that there was a million chances I had that I didn't take mm -hmm. like wake up call I was says. gonna say that's wake up call yeah there yes. really was a million chances I didn't answer so it feels good to be beyond that there's a lot of regret but there's mm -hmm. a, a lot of hope and joy as well 
and a lot of pride in being where you are now. Yeah, 100%. You know? Like, I feel like you have had such a, a whirlwind, tumultuous yeah. journey. I put the band through so much heartache and so much bullshit. Yeah. And it's like, to, to be in this moment now and to care about it so much and to really, like, we grind it out. We want to be the best band ever. So yeah. it's, it's an amazing feeling to kind of be a mature emo mm -hmm. band. That's incredible. Yeah. Elder emo. Elder emos. <laughs> I love, I am too, yeah. I am too, forever. Yeah. For, I'm sorry, Robbie. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, you. I honestly am so happy for you. Right on. And where you are. Thank you. I've been a fan from the beginning, um, been along for the whole ride. Right on. And I'm um, genuinely so happy for you and grateful. Yeah. And grateful and I love well, I'm this I'm grateful album. that we have stuck around for this long mm -hmm. and we're still able to play giant massive shows like when we were young it just feels unreal yeah it's it's so good and it's so important it fills my heart yeah and i know i'm not the only one who feels this way i feel like it's important as it well. is important yeah oh my god thank you thank you we'll be right back i just could not be happier for robbie um I may have to get used to that, but I have so much respect for this. I'm so happy for him, how far he's come, what he's built for himself, his beautiful family, this new music. And I love how much he loves the used. And I love how much he loves you and us, the fans. He cares so much. And I think that's what makes him so special and so beautiful. Thank you so much for being part of the Allison Hagendorf Show presented by Cloudwater. A huge thank you to Danny Wimmer Presents. Thank you, Arctic Zone, for our guest gift bags. And most importantly, thank you. If you enjoyed today's episode, I'd be honored if you subscribe to the channel. And I would love to hear from you. So please like, comment, rate, review, whatever you're feeling. And reach out to me on socials at Allison Hagendorf. Let's connect. Let me know who I should interview next and what made you smile today. Until next time, let's be kind to ourselves and each other. See you soon.